Good evening and welcome to Festival Fun Facts. My name is Dennis Argo, and I am proud and privileged to be the director of the New Jersey State Solo and Ensemble Festival. Uh, welcome to the this evening's stream. Um, we This is like the sixth or seventh uh, episode in the series uh, and we are honored tonight and so thrilled uh, to be able to shine the light on our gold one star uh, students who are in middle school. So these are students who received um, the top scores um, between the 28 and, and the 30 out of a score of 30 points uh, maximum. Uh, but they also performed a class repertoire, which is the highest and most difficult, most sophisticated repertoire on our repertoire listing. So these are some uh, incredibly diff gifted, uh, talented and dedicated and devoted young musicians. Um, a couple of which unfortunately cannot be here tonight, a couple of students from Tenekill Middle School in Kloster. I still want to give a shout out to those students uh, and uh, also uh, Heritage Middle School in Livingston uh, because the schedule conflicts couldn't be here. But we have a student from uh, East Brunswick, um, um, Junior High School, Churchill Junior High School. We have a private student um, of, out of a private studio, the Oradell Piano Studio, um, Elena Yamauchi, and then a student from Upper Montgomery Middle School with us this evening. All gold one star winners. Before we get to our first uh, guests of the evening, I have a couple of announcements to share with you. Uh, as you know, our registration uh, phase for the spring slash state festival uh, has concluded. And now we are in the process of working with Music for All and getting those registrations uh, eyes dotted and T's crossed uh, so that we can populate our adjudication platform, Competition Suite, with all the student names and then start to assign uh, our adjudicators to the students. From May 1st, um, that's from May 1st to May 15th, I will put it up on the screen as a reminder, uh, that's when the students will be uploading their videos and the PDFs of their scores. So each student will record themselves um, with an introduction of themselves, what school they go to, who they are, how old they are, what year they are in the school, and what piece they're gonna be performing along with a little bit of interesting tidbits of the piece so that the adjudicator has a little bit of background information. Those will occur from May 1st through May 15th. So if you're watching and you're saying, I can't get into competition suite yet, what's going on? It's okay. You won't be able to until May 1st, okay? We had a webinar the other night, great, wonderful attendance for lots of students and teachers, uh, and we just tried to calm everybody down because we're ready to go for the Spring Festival, but you have another few days to tighten up your recordings if you need to, okay? May 1st through May 15th. And then on May 16th through the 30th, that's when the judges get a chance to view the videos, read the PDFs, and provide commentary and feedback for all the students, as well as rate them uh, according to the rubric that we've created. And it's a 30-point rubric, like I mentioned earlier, with three categories, um, tone quality and intonation, technique, and musicianship, okay? And that's the same three categories for every instrument, whether you're a double bassist, pianist, vocalist, music theater, all the same categories with verbiage and vocabulary that's specific to that area. Okay, uh, and then in uh, the beginning of June, um, probably not June 1st, we're going to give a little bit of leeway for the Memorial Day holiday, uh, but the first week of June, we will certainly announce at that point and share with the students their ratings for the Spring Festival, uh, if they're performing as return members who did not receive Gold One Star, or if they're new to the festival performances, and we have 619 entries in that area, or if they're one of the 157 gold one star students, they're performing for the state level. So they'll have a separate slate of judges, um, same rubric, uh, but they'll get a different perspective on the performance that they um, um, submitted for the spring, uh, for the winter festival. Okay, so that's a little bit of the nuts and bolts. I'll revisit some of that at the end of the stream if you're still with us, but you didn't come here to hear me. You came here to hear about the students, which is why we're doing this. We wanted to uh, not only provide a, an opportunity, uh, Arts Ed New Jersey, uh, in cooperation with Music for All and Competition Suite for the students of New Jersey to, to have something for which to look forward to, for which to work towards and, and achieve their musical goals with so many things being canceled and postponed. But not only provide that opportunity, but also an opportunity with these live streams to tell their stories, to share their journey. 
uh, from finding out about the festival through the, the performances and now on to the second level, okay? So uh, we hope to share that with you this evening uh, with our three guests. And to that end, let me bring on our first student and her teacher. Um, this young lady is uh, a student from Churchill Junior High School, and her name is Isabella Francisco, and her teacher joins us also uh, from um, uh, Churchill Junior High School, and she is Sarah Francino. Sarah is a return guest to our um, um, live stream, as she had a student uh, earlier in the, in the uh, series as well. So welcome, Isabella and Sarah. How are you? Good. Hi. Thanks for having us again. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Isabella, does, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I'd like you to just to kind of talk a little bit about your journey here. What what year are you in in school, Isabella? I am in eighth grade. In eighth grade. And, and what instrument did you perform on for the, for the winter festival? Uh, I played the double bass. For the festival. Double bass. Double bass. And how long have you been playing that instrument? How long have you been studying that instrument? About three years. That's amazing. That's amazing. So have you have you grown into the bass or have you have you developed with in different instruments? Did you have like a half, a three quarter, and full? What tell us a little bit about that? Uh, the instrument grew with me. I change instruments quite a lot. Uh, right now I have a fully purchased one. It looks a little odd because it's painted Ooh. instead of stained, but it's, it has a nice sound. Awesome. Well, that's important. That's, that's the important thing, right? And Ms. Franchino, have, have you been Isabella's teacher since the fifth grade? How does, when, did you, when did you guys meet up and start your journey? I just began teaching Isabella this year as an eighth grader because our, our school is eighth and ninth grade. Um, but um, I think, Isabella, did you start in fourth grade with everybody else? Did you start on bass or did you start on a different string instrument? I can't remember. I started on bass. I started the summer before fifth grade. That's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, I can't take too much credit um, for her success because we, you know, we just met this year. But um, you know, she's already playing at the level of an advanced, you know, high school student. So it's really exciting to see where she's going to go. Absolutely, Isabella. Can you can you tell us? Can you share with us? Um, I'm a bass trombonist, so I live in I live in your part of the register of the world. And it's, you know, it's not often we are featured as solo instruments. And when we do, we take full advantage of it. So can you tell us what, what piece did you select to perform for the festival? Uh, I chose to play Caballero by John Merle. Merle. That's interesting. And so, and can you tell us a little bit about the piece? Uh, the piece has two different sections. One is quite fast paced and the other one is very slow, moderato. Um, there's a lot of accents in the first section, and in the second section, it's very singable, cantable. Wonderful, wonderful. So, how did so? Can you guys tell us how did you find out about the festival? How did you what did you, how did you start the process? Tell us a little bit about that, please. Uh, um, oh, go ahead, Isabella. <laughs> uh, I found out about it through um, Ms. Franchino in school. Uh, I prepared for it by taking making a lot of takes and listening it over. And that's about how I prepared. Okay. Did you did you select the piece together? Were you, isn't that something you were already working on? Um, it's something I was already working on that I prepared for, I think, regionals, but that was canceled. So I decided to play it there instead. Okay. Okay. It was let me ask you a question. Was the was the piece the piece you were performing for and preparing for regions? Was it already on our repertoire list, or did you have to get the permission request to perform it for our festival? Do you remember that process, Ms. Franchino or Ms. Francisco? Uh, it was already on the list. I saw it there, and I was like, oh, okay. Great, great. You know, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Franchino. Oh, no. I was just going to say it was on the list, which, which made it very easy. It was um, almost just a very natural progression for her. You know, we knew region was canceled. so. Um, right, right we encouraged all of our students who were taking those auditions to, to do this. And it's been, it's been really, really fantastic for all awesome. the students. So. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were fortunate, you know, I, uh, I, I'm referring to this repertoire list and we know what it is, but if some folks that might be watching, we, you know, New Jersey doesn't have its own yet, its own repertoire list of that mm -hmm. kind of, because we have 11,000 plus selections on it. 
but we worked, you know, we were putting this together um, with Arts Ed and some of our partners in, at the, at the nation, national level. We worked with different states about, you know, how are you guys doing this in a virtual setting? And uh, working with the National Federation of High Schools, uh, who's been doing all this great work on, you know, the, the Colorado and the Maryland studies and helping us out with guidance. They were able to partner us up with the state of Wisconsin, who basically said, here, use our list this year. And that's that's why we got all these selections with the publisher's permission, which is, as you know, that's half the battle is to get permission from the publisher to go ahead and use it. And what we were able to do, too, is, uh, you know, since I'm on the NJMEA board, I was able to take the music that the regions were using and the state was looking for all state and get permission to go ahead and add that so that kids who are already so I can't I couldn't tell you if this one was something I intentionally did or if Wisconsin already had, but anything that Wisconsin didn't have that we were looking to do, we added it to try to make you know uh, as, as smooth a process as possible for the students. So all right, so so you guys you select the piece, you you know what the deadlines are and stuff. Isabella, you had already started practicing, right? But now you got to get to the recording, right? How many, can I ask you, how many times or how much did you tape yourself? How many times did you take yourself before you said, this is the one that I want to submit? Um, I go through multiple days of recording because I think that if I take a break, I'll get better the next day. But I don't really remember. There was a lot. I remember listening to one and saying, this is bad here, but this is also bad in this other one. So I had to decide which one was best. There was no perfect, perfect one because there's always room for error. Um, so that's why there's a lot of takes, but I did find one good one in the end. It was a fun process that got a lot of critiquing in my head. Okay, great. And what kind of feedback, how much feedback were you able to give her, Ms. Franchino, along the way? Um, well, what we did for the first, for the first round was the students sent in their videos, um, about a week before your deadline. So I was able to review them and um and you know give some suggestions so i think um i think i got to see one or two of isabella's before um you know she submitted one that we both thought was the best um and then one of the other things that was really challenging and i think a great experience for the students was having to give an introductory speech because it's something as musicians, we're right, not always the greatest public speakers, um, but it forced right. them to do that. And um, I think for some of my students, that might have been the more stressful part. Um, but um, okay, okay. that was really great too. And uh, and it was nice to see Isabella progress. And, and now we get to see her, you know, now that she's at the state level, um, we'll get to see her, you know, progress on the same piece. And um, you know, just see a lot of improvement. So that's amazing. It's amazing. How did you feel about is Isabella? How did you feel about the the opportunity or the challenge, depending on your viewpoint, about doing that introduction before your selection? Uh, I thought it was a little awkward because I had to do it a bunch of times before in each of the takes. I'm ch thinking about changing it up this time and just stitching two videos together so it won't be as tedious. It was one of the harder parts. Right. <laughs> Now remember, you can you can you can you can stitch together or splice the introduction to the performance. But everybody who's watching, if you're if you're doing this for the first time, please don't edit the actual performance. The performance has to be the best take, right? That's as if it was a live performance. That's what we're trying to um, to relegate. We you know we've been trying to make it as open and welcoming as possible. We also don't want we don't want the production to be adjudicated. We want the performance to be adjudicated, right? Uh, and that's also, you know, Ms. Franchino, I, I, I assume you would agree with me, it, it has the kids practice more, right? And it also has them become self-assessing uh, crit yeah. crit critics of their own work and say, okay, like, like Isabella said, this take was a little bit, uh, needed some attention here, but this one needs some attention here. Now I have to kind of put those together, right? Yeah. yeah. Isabella, really are you, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, just um, the recording process, um, I think, is it's just a really excellent skill for them to learn. I, all the students are learning it now. Um, and um, I think it's really invaluable because they're going, they're learning how to be their best teachers. And I think this this festival um, 
truly helped them uh, to to um, improve those those self assessing skills. So that's yeah. cool, Isabella. Are you performing uh, the same piece for the state festival? Uh, yeah, I'm performing the same piece with including the feedback that I got from last time. Let's can we talk about that? How, what did you, what did what did you learn um, from that? That was was uh, Ha Young Jung your your uh, adjudicator? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and she's the principal bassist from the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. Uh, I have to tell you that she did that adjudication from uh, South Korea <laughs> because she's been there since uh, uh, last March. <laughs> she was she moved she uh, was on she was out in Korea before the pandemic and has been there. I think she's still there. But I know that she was doing her adjudication from that from that location. Um, so what did you what what did you learn? Uh, what you know, what kinds of comments may have substantiated the work you were already doing, supported the work you were doing? And was there anything new that maybe you got from her? Um, what I mainly took from it was how to make my piece more dramatic. A lot of it was monotone and dull, but I did learn how to make accented pieces, accented mar places uh, more emphasized and more dramatic and how to make the moderato section more great uh, more emphasized phrase wise instead of one single note. I learned how to put the dynamics on everything instead of just one specific part that I thought would look nice. That's wonderful. I mean, I think you're under, I think you're underselling yourself a little bit. You know, I have to tell everybody there's, you know, uh, Isabella is one of only two bassists to receive the gold one star and she's in eighth grade. So I'm sure there was plenty of drama uh, that you put into your selection. Perhaps there was room for growth, as you mentioned earlier, and that we all have room to grow. I uh, you know, try to practice every day, So, uh, but good for you. That's awesome. So I, I know you, you mentioned uh, Upbeat and um, the, some of the work. What, what else, what's going on at, at Churchill Junior High School? What can we expect in the coming weeks during the end of the school year? What are you guys working on there? Uh, we are getting ready for our spring concert, and um, all of, we we've been doing all of our concerts this year virtually using a, a software called Upbeat, um, which allows us to compile hundreds of student videos into um, a, a concert performance. And then some of the things we're going to be doing a little bit differently for the spring concert. Um, Isabella's class. Um, is doing um, some chamber music. So we're gonna let the students um, decide whether to record with their groups in Upbeat or if they wanna get together outside, if they're comfortable with that, they can Wonderful. record that way. Um, and we also do a Pops concert in June, which we'll be re uh, releasing virtually um, where we're gonna be combining forces with our, our chorus students and our band students, wow. which is something we usually get to do in a normal year um so there's there are some silver linings and uh some positive things that have come out of, of this year um and you know we we're really looking forward to see what happens in the fall because um the students have just proven so flexible and so willing to try whatever crazy ideas we throw at them so <laughs> it's sure, working sure. i'm yeah. wondering you know um how, how, you know, looking into the future, if if we co if we go back to a somewhat normal situation, you know, we're live. If we're if we're vaccinated, we still have some masks and socially distance. How much of this technology that we're using now, that you're using now, do you think you'll hold on to and and implement in your programs? Um. Wow. I I was actually thinking about this today. I was trying to to. Uh, picture what, what September would look like. And um, I think the, um, what will, what will stay is, is the student, just the student recording process. Um, having students assess their own videos, I think is really just so important um, because, you know, um, it's way different when you're listening to yourself versus when you're with a hundred other people. So we'll hang on to that. Um, I think, and um, you know, I think that's that's probably the biggest one. Um, we've also been doing some composition projects this year that I'd like to see continue. Um, Wonderful. So um, those, I think, those would be the two big things. Yeah. 
Isabella, so we need to wrap up our time slot. It went very, very quickly before we bring on our, our next guest. And so great to meet you. Great to see you again, Ms. Franchino, but, and so great to meet you. I'm definitely going to look for your videos. Isabella, what, what are you most looking forward to, um, not only for this festival coming up, but you know, for next school year? What, do you, what would you like to see happen for, for orchestra for, as a ninth grader next year? Um, Orchestra-wise, I think spending a lot of time criticizing your own work is very fun. Not for, fun, but also beneficial in a pers on a personal level. I think it's great to receive all this feedback that you can listen over again, over and over and over again. It's very, it would not be calming, but more, it, would, it helps me a lot. It helps, I think it helps a lot of people. I listened over the other recordings and it seemed to help them too. That's awesome. Well, listen, again, thank you so much, Isabella, for agreeing to be part of the stream and sharing your story with us. I wish you all the very best of luck, not only with the, the State Festival and your performance there, but all your endeavors beyond that, okay? Ms. Francina, Francina it was a pleasure to see you again, and you, uh, I hope our paths cross soon. Absolutely. Have a great night. You thank take you. care. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, we have our next folks with us. Uh oh, hi. hi <laughs> this is uh, Mr. Yamauchi. Is it Rui Yamauchi? Rui. Rui. And Elena Yamauchi. Elena. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You both fit on the screen. You have to sit like this. It's a pleasure to meet you finally, sir. We've had so many great conversations. Uh, yeah, totally. Going. Pleasure to meet you, and a wonderful pleasure to meet you, Elena. Yes, thank you. It's oh, nice welcome. to meet you too. So can Before you we start, I just wanted to say one thing that uh, you know I wanna I wanna thank you personally for managing this great project this year. I've had uh, over uh, close to ten students enter your festival, and all of them had a very positive experience. And I know the backstage work that you do. And I don't know how you are so available to all the teachers. I must have emailed you maybe seven, eight times during the festival with all these questions. Every time you're very courteous, very accessible, very encouraging, and ideally, this has been a wonderful experience for, I'm sure, all the teachers, all the students. Well, th th uh, thank you so much. I mean, I, that means a lot. That means a lot. I mean, you know, I'm, this is my 37th year in edu music education here in the state of New Jersey. Uh, I know, uh, I, I know what it did for me as a kid, mm -hmm. how it changed my life, and I wanted to do whatever I can do. I, I continue to try to do whatever I can do to make the path for the kids as as seamless as possible and as obstacle free as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, working with their parents, working with their teachers, is just a part of that process. And it's it's easy when you know. I mean, I, I don't reciprocate here. You were also very you know, organized and courteous as well in our communication. And, um, you know, whatever we can do to to facilitate this process for the kids is what it's all about. So, but thank Excellent. you. It's a, yes. it's a beautiful way to start. Um, yeah. You know what I'm worried about? What's that? Is, is are we going to have it next year? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. We're, we're, we're working on plans. Um, the festival will be back. The, the, the New Jersey State Soul and Ensemble Festival will exist next year. I can... I can say that without any kind of um, um, no no tentative, no trepidation. Uh, we are going to have a remote aspect, a, a virtual aspect again. Mm -hmm. However, the plan is, uh, and I'm getting the cart a little bit of before the horse, is for the state festival to try to do that live in the spring of 2022. Sounds good. Uh, that's what we're looking for to do. Obviously, mm -hmm. science and everything has to be on our side. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we also don't want to get rid of the virtual aspect because it opened up so many possibilities to students who may not be able to participate in a live setting because of transportation issues or you know, financial issues, et cetera. So we're going to try to balance it, work with our brothers and sisters with New Jersey Music Education Association and, and their packed calendar to make sure we pick a slot where – uh, mm -hmm. Students don't have to make a choice. We want to have students be able to participate in everything if they can uh, and, and make it a positive experience. So uh, we also found, as and hopefully you, you discovered this as well, is because, because of the remote setting, 
uh, we are able to facilitate and utilize these judges from all over the country and all over the world. So what a great opportunity for your daughter to hear from a flautist from upstate New York or Tennessee or Florida or, you know, like the bassist who was just on from South Korea. So it's a great opportunity. But enough of me talking. Let's get to Elena. Elena, what grade are you in? I'm in seventh grade. Seventh grade. Oh, my gosh. And Elena, for those of you who are watching, we discussed briefly in the, with the previous student that our score system was based out of 30 points. And Elena only got a 29. <laughs> what a terrific, terrific rating, right? So two tens and a nine she must have received, which is an amazing score. Uh, and and you're a flautist, right? You you play the flute. Yes. What selection did you play for the for the festival? What was the piece? Uh, we decided to play um, "Fantasy" by Gabriel. No, uh, a whole state. You're asking. Well, no, for the for the previous festival. Oh, region. Oh, I we decided to play Sweet in A minor by Talamon. Talamon. So this is and that's class A level material. It's very sophisticated, very, you know, uh, difficult from a technical and a musical standpoint. So to be able to play that uh, at this level uh, at that age is incredible. So it looks sounds like, sounds like you're gonna be playing some four A. Is that what I heard you say? Yes. For the state festival. So again. And, and, and that's about, let me see, Telemont to Foray is probably about 250 years. <laughs> so you've covered a lot of musical ground in your selections, which is amazing. Um, I understand, am I going to be able to coax you into playing a little bit for us this evening? Uh, yeah. Who will we play? Yeah. <laughs> would, you, would you like to do that now or would you like to talk more? What would, what would you like to do? Uh, we can play now. Sounds good. I'd love to hear you. Without the, let's get set up. And you're gonna play the Telemon or the Four A? Ah, Four A. Excellent. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. I'm gonna mute this and unmute the other one. Okay. You see, you see Sounds two good. cameras. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk a little bit while you're setting up. So you know, I, again, those of you who are watching, um, you can see some of the even tonight some of the challenges of being able to set up the correct recording materials that you're gonna need to be able to do this in a live setting. Now, uh, Elena is fortunate that dad is a professional pianist, has his own piano studio, and that's where his students uh, were involved in the festival. But um, Elena is a student at, an, at a nearby school up in Burton County, and, and dad just coached her on this. And so he's got the machinations to be able to record uh, at from home, right? Uh, so um, what, you know, what other students are doing uh, is, you know, they're working from, from their living rooms, from their bedrooms. Some folks uh, were able to record at churches, but there's a lot that goes into it. The right lighting, the right microphone, the right distance with your camera. So you get a full shot of you and the uh, pianist if it's, if it's recorded with a live <clears throat> accompanist. Oh, I have to, let me see, I think I have, I'm waiting on them to come on back. I'm not sure exactly where they went to this other camera. I hope they're able to work it out. But last this past Monday, we had a webinar, uh, myself and Mark Sternberg from Music for All, uh, who's the, the that's the, the company out in the Midwest that's handling all our registrations uh, and is also the uh, conduit and the communicator with uh, Competition Suite, which is the adjudication platform that we use. Um, talking to students about what to wear, what to have in the background, uh, how to light themselves, how to use the zoom on the camera or not use it. Uh, and then the all important um, aspect, which is to be able to um, critique yourself and pick the, the best um, track. Okay, you're back. Um, do you see the other camera? It's already connected to your suite. Uh, I don't see it in here. It's All I see is this one. Are you sure? Yeah, the, all I see is one one, one Rui and Elena interview. That's it. Rui and Elena performance. No, you don't see it? I don't see it, sir. Okay, all right, hold on. Yeah, okay. So Sorry. Again, that's okay. I'm just trying to explain to the folks that are viewing. So, so, just, so just so you're aware, too, this the platform we're using for this is called – oh, here we go. Now I see it. Oh. You're there now. Yay! I see. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna you, got, you. Got, okay you can go. Ahead. All right. So they've got a, they've got a set up here. Wonderful. So this streamyard is a lot like Zoom on steroids. I'm able to have a little green room 
for the performers. Uh, we have a couple. Our next guests are actually already here. They can hear me, Mr. Hackle and Abner. I wave to you. Say hi. Uh, and um, we're setting up for Rui and Elena's performance here. Okay. Right, so a couple of excerpts right. of the four A. So, 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 what do you need? Might be fun. Wonderful, yeah. Now I now I see this stream. I don't see the other one, so make sure that you turn that on. Elena, that was beautiful. If you can hear me, <laughs> oh, let's see if they come back. <clears throat> well, you can hear those of you who are listening. You can hear the sophistication of the articulation that was being um, uh, demonstrated there. The, obviously, the wide range of, of the, the, the instrument being demonstrated, um, lots of musicianship uh, evident there for a very young performer. So there's no surprise that um, Elena scored a 29 out of 30 on her performance, right? Absolutely. I'm waiting to see if their, <laughs> their link comes back. Oh, here we go. Yay, let me bring them back into the studio. Wonderfully done. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> yeah, look at this. You guys are masters there. That was, that's a beautiful, what a beautiful sound, Elena. Great um, demonstration of technique and musicianship. It's no wonder. I was saying it's no wonder she's uh, got uh, uh, a 29 out of 30. I can't, I don't understand why the 29. I'm looking for the other point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Elena, can you tell us a little bit about? Um, changing from the Telemann to this very, you know, impressionistic romantic piece, what, what kinds of differences did you have to do to prepare to, for this festival? Yes. Well, we decided to pick another piece, not the same piece. Mm -hmm. And we knew that it would be a harder challenge, but we wanted to create new experiences. So I could learn the best I could not so I could, um, win this competition, but so that I can learn new things. And so we wanted to create a contrast and instead of Baroque music, we chose French music. And I had to change many things like the technique, the mood, the tempo. Yes. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're, it sounds like you did. <laughs> Whatever work you're doing to continue working is beautiful. Have you prepared your video yet or are you in the process of that? Uh, we're still in the process of working. We're trying to get better every day. Sure. 
Sure. Remember, you have all the way to the May 15th is the deadline. So that's you have plenty of time to do that. Uh, and what we're trying to do, too, since you're moving, you're going to be performing for the state festival, we're going to do our best we can to um, get you a different adjudicator so that you have more, more diverse feedback for this particular festival. But did you get a chance to listen to the, to the feedback from the previous adjudicator? Yes, I did. Okay. What, did, what, did you, what were you able to take from that feedback? Um, one thing she said was that I could have been a bit better with my tone. Mm. It was, okay. a, um, it was kind of dull and I could have been more open with my tone. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That might've been just a reflection of that performance. Cause I mean, I'm a bass trombonist, but it sounded like you were pretty full and, and robust in your tone here this evening. So, so, um, let me, let me ask you one, one other question because our time is up. We're going to go to a, another guest here in a moment. Um, what, what do you tell other students that, you know, may be a little tentative about trying something like this for next year or they have some anxiety going into the spring and state festival? What kind of advice can Elena give them uh, uh, or, or Rue as dad and, and coach to, to get them beyond their, their anxiety, their, their second guessing? Um, well, I have those moments many times, especially when competitions come around. Mm -hmm. But what I think about is the end when I can think about how I learn new things, um, how I finished something that I really wanted to do. And awesome. yeah. <laughs> That's great. How about you, Mr. Yamauchi? Anything you'd like to share with us? Right. My daughter said it very well. I think... Um, this, the, it, it can only be positive, I think, for the kids. In fact, um, you know, um, I just wanted to put this in the context. My daughter is with me today um, because I I found out from my wife who works in the Pacific Public Schools and she's a music teacher. And she said, you know what, Rue, you should do this. And I said, oh, really? And, um, you know, um, he was open to private studios like mine as well. So I entered to tell, uh, tell my student, piano students, including Elena, she was a uh, dual ent uh, uh, entry. And um, I had a student the other day who, who did uh, participate in this uh, uh, festival. And, it, you know, she, he actually were, uh, learned a new sonatina after the festival and then once he he passed that piece uh, just a few days ago and then his comment was you know if i had played this piece i would i might have scored higher okay you know and in a very positive way he was very excited so you know i i feel even today uh that the kids uh uh, uh learned a lot from the uh adjudication the whole process of preparing that he a lot of students are better because of the festival. And I cannot really thank you and all the organizers enough about the opportunities. And I'm sure that all my students would probably want to do it again next year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Elena and, and Rue, it was a pleasure again to meet you in person. Well, this this way. Uh, hopefully one day we will be able to be in person. Uh, Definitely. Uh, and please tune in next week because I have, I have a great announcement. We're going to be with the members of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra next week. Uh, and uh, Elena should know that uh, being a gold one-star recipient for the Spring Festival, um, the New Jersey Symphony is going to provide a two-hour master class for all the gold one-star students in June. Wow. So I'll be sending a, I'll be sending out an email in the coming days um, with your with the with the registration link and the date. And just so you know, the first six students that respond will each have a ten to twelve minute uh, session with the musician from this from the symphony. So um, if you're awesome. if you know what you want to play and and get back to me quickly. We'll get you on that list. Sounds good. Okay? Thank you. All right. A pleasure Thank again you. to see you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, and we wish you all the best moving forward, okay? All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. What a great story, a beautiful player. And uh, the, our next guests, to, to wrap up the middle school students that are uh, gold one stars and were able to join us this evening, we have from Upper uh, Montgomery Upper Middle School, um, the student's name is Abner Brijesh. Hi, Abner. And his teacher, Dr. Adam Hackle. Hi, guys. Welcome. Nice to Good be evening. Here. 
Thank How you are you? Us. Yeah. And thanks. I, I ran over a little bit with the previous guest. Excuse me, the tech, the tech issue. But we'll go. We'll go as long as we need to go tonight, guys. So Abner, tell us a little bit about yourself. What grade are you in, sir? I am in eighth grade, and I have been studying with Dr. Hackel for about the past one year. He uh, came in awesome. this year to teach our class. And, and what is your what is your instrument, Abner? I play the alto sax. Alto sax. Alto sax. And. Uh, I'll tell the audience, I'll tell the folks that are watching, as, as we mentioned with the previous uh, young ladies who, who performed and, and we spoke to, uh, we, our rubric was out of a score of 30 points. And to be a gold one star, you need to be in the top three. And Abner scored a 28 out of 30, unbelievable, on Class A repertoire. Again, this is the highest, most difficult, sophisticated music on our list. Abner, do you remember, the, what was the piece that you played for the festival? I played Sonata Number no. Three by Handel, and it was arranged by Rasher. Um, unbelievable! Uh, did, uh, did you did you play uh, all the movements, or one or two of the movements? How much of the piece did you play? I played three movements. I played one, two, and four because wow. you know the eight minute time constraint. Um, my private teacher and I and Dr. Hackel, we all figured that you know if it's eight minutes, might as well do one, two, and four because we felt like that would showcase you know my playing multiple playing you know, techniques the best in that time frame. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Dr. Hackle and, and uh, Abner, how did you guys found, find out about the festival? How did you go about, you know, starting this conversation and say, yes, let's do this? So uh, just very briefly, um, this was uh, recommended by my supervisor uh, and this was sent out to all the music teachers. You know, because we didn't have a lot of the traditional competitions that we were able to do this year, I thought that this was a great way, particularly at the time when this first came to us, most of our school was still completely virtual. So this was going to be a great opportunity for the kids who are still at home to be able to participate in this. And, um, you know, not so much for Abner because he's a very confident young man, but I think with a lot of the students who have participated in the winter and as well as my students who are participating in the spring, is a lot of students who maybe would be a little bit more shy or a little bit more reticent, this was a great opportunity to really bring them out and give them the opportunity and and really just listen to feedback. And I think that was one of the greatest things that you offer is that it's not so much about a rating or a medal or whatever, but it's it's getting that feedback from a professional. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. We, you know, this is one of the things that we were able to implement because of the challenge of being remote was we got we were able to get folks from all over the country all over the world to be able to provide this feedback uh we couldn't fly them in from all over but they were able to do it from their homes right so so abner if you played alto sax you, you had either debbie dr debbie confredo or jay bocook as your adjudicator right am i correct um unfortunately i can't remember the name maybe dr hackle might yeah. but I'm, yeah, Jay yeah. Both, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Jay is, you know, both both amazing adjudicators and Jay happens to be one of the most prolific, you know, arrangers, composers in, in the band world in the United States right now. You so, play a lot of his pieces. There you go. So, so there you go. And it's amazing to have the composer provide you with solo repertoire feedback. So it's astounding. And just so everybody knows, um, picked up two since then, and we're, we're going to be getting some more that we'll announce next week. But we have a great drum set judge coming up, coming who's joined us, John Riley, who is the Village Vanguard drummer, played with you know Miles Davis and just about everybody. And joining us just the other day to help with uh, some trombone adjudicating is Key Poland, uh, another another um, concert you know, marching band uh, drum corps uh, arranger composer. So we just these folks are all. You know, uh, nobody's getting rich doing it. That's for sure. Right. They're really doing it for the love of the students and the love of the music. So it's just, it's just amazing. Abner, I understand that I'm going to be able to coax you into playing a little bit for us. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yes. yes. So what what are you going to play? The, are, you, uh, are you performing the handle for the state festival as well, or did you change pieces? No, I'll be playing the same piece with the okay. added improvements that was suggested. Which movement do you think you're going to will you share with us this evening? Let's play a little bit of the starting movement. So, number one. Sounds great. Whatever you're ready, sir. Thank you. 
That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Wonderfully done, Habner. I just picked it up, no warm up, boom. Right on. I loved it. And for you know, those of you who are watching or will be watching the stream later, you know, there were no alto saxophones in the days of Handel. So this is obviously a transcription of a string piece or another woodwind piece. I'm not familiar with this. Do you, do you, does it say on the score, Abner? Do you know, Dr. Handel? Not on the score, but I believe this was written originally for violin. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and somebody transcribed it and arranged it, and everybody who listened can hear the delicate articulations that Abner was able to get there, very fine uh, playing. You can hear the decay in the sound and the dynamics, you know, wonderfully done, very mature playing for, you, I think you said eighth grade, correct? Yeah. I, I could barely get myself out of the house at eighth grade, so congratulations to you, Abner. So, Thank you. So, was this what did you think about the recording process Was it well we do have a recording studio at home although that's mainly for some other string instruments that we have not violin viola cello bass but more like more electric bass guitar all those things so cool. for this one we did a more basic recording but you know since we were allowed to take multiple attempts we obviously did take advantage of that and we had maybe four or five full takes, meaning of the full seven minutes of, you know, the three movements I was playing. And we had, you know, a lot of mini recordings, which we stopped after a few measures because, you know, I was very nitpicky in the process. If I, you know, took a mistimed breath and it pushed the, you know, timing of a measure off even by a little bit, I would stop the recording and redo. So tedious process took multiple weeks, but, you know, eventually we got a few takes that I liked and, you know, we went with that. Awesome. And we love that, Dr. Hackle, because it makes them practice. <laughs> right. I, I, I was going to say, one of the things that uh, I think one of the previous teachers mentioned is just being able to hear themselves and being able to get into that habit of critiquing. And and I think that's one of the greatest things that we got out of this this whole, you know, basing, basically being placed into this position where my kids you know, even the ones who were not participating and we use a lot of different technology where they're listening to something and they're listening to it two or three times. And then they get into small groups and they critique each other. And then it comes up to me again. And it's like, it gives them an opportunity to really kind of hone in on their skill, on their craft, and it makes them better overall musicians. And the other thing I would say is, again, because they're not face to face with somebody, it reduces in a lot of the anxiety, particularly for middle school students. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with all the above. How much do you think um, we're moving forward? We, you know, we can't predict what science is going to do and not do for us. And, but if we go back to some sort of semblance of normal, even if it's distance and mask, et cetera, how much of this technology do you think you'll continue to implement in your teaching with your students? Um, I, I'm very fortunate in the fact that Montgomery Township is very progressive when it comes to the arts. Uh, we've been using smart music for probably about 10 years now um, and will continue to throughout the grades. I, I get a lot of a lot of great um, a lot of great foundational skills that my kids are able to get immediately. They're able to see some of the really tangible things and then they can send me recordings and I can just go blah, 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 this or blah. So it makes it very quick. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to sit in front of, you know, my 112 kids all at once. I can do this with a little bit more leisure time. Um, like one of my other colleagues said, upbeat music app has been great. And I mean, Nothing is ever going to replace the the synthesis, the joy that you get from playing together. Um, this last week was the first time our district has really had a large amount of our students that are back in school now. And for me, as a band director, hearing five parts playing is 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 exciting, right, and right, right. the kids are excited about that. So. I think the technology, as, as it's always been, is always going to be there to enhance the learning, to encourage the students. And 
like Abner was saying, to give them the opportunity to be able to truly perfect their art and their craft. But nothing can ever take the place of that that feeling you get when you hear that chord, when you hear yeah. that that articulation played and you see the expression on that child's face when they know they've gotten it right. And it's Absolutely. it's just it's the greatest thing about being a teacher. Absolutely. You said it. You said it, sir. And hopefully, hopefully more and more of us are experiencing that as more and more kids are coming back. It's going to be cathartic when we're able to play a concert all together for sure. Uh, Abner, let me ask you a, a question. You, you, you were very meticulous in the recording of the music. How did you feel about the recording of the introduction to the to the recording of, of who you are and where you're from and all that stuff that we ask? Well, uh Sometimes I have to redo that as well if I forgot certain details. So that was a bit <laughs> tedious, you know, because that one recording could have been a better one than what I took. So, you know, there's that opportunity loss. But, you know, like what one student was saying earlier on in this uh, live stream, you know, next time for the spring festival, I might just, you know, do the introduction and then and then do the performance fully unedited, but just edit those two parts together so that every single time I don't have to, you know, do sure. the introduction. Sure, sure. It makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. And um, so, what's what do you have coming up at Montgomery Upper Middle School together? What are you working on there that you want to share with our audience in terms of what we have to look forward to for concerts or productions? So, well, um, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Abner. No, go for okay. it. Um, I was just going to say um, that you know we have the jazz band after school that's just recently started, and that's my first opportunity to play with an in-person group in, you know, over a year at this point. So I just want to say that's a, you know, a great thing. Sorry. No, awesome. go ahead. no absolutely. And the, um, you know, in addition to the jazz band, which right now because of their size is our only in school full ensemble. Um, we have, we've been using the upbeat music app to put together different chamber pieces for our students uh, in, in, groups no larger than five, but be between four and five. And then also being able to use some of the um, the flex literature that we've been working with over the, pla the past couple of years. And again, bravo to some of these composers, because um, I mean, it was like they saw the issue and by January, there was like a good library out there that my, my middle school is able to use. So amazing, right? yeah, that yeah. was fantastic. It is wonderful to see this come together as a community and just just make it happen. Just make it work. Yeah, it's taught us that. And those are, those are skills that these kids, all of us, can take onto other parts of our life, right? Absolutely. Um, Dr. Hack, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Thank you. you. Been online a couple of times so in, in some, some emails. And says, I love the support you have for your students. Abner, a pleasure to meet you. Um, I, you. As I indicated to the, to the previous student, and I'll tell you now, even though saxophone is not an orchestral instrument, as you know, so NJSO will not be providing um, for, for saxophone master classes, but we do have a partner, uh, Elefante Music, and um, is going to be working with us, and uh, they're going to be providing master classes for, uh, let, me, let me give the classical voice, musical theater, classical guitar, and classical saxophone. So um, I'll be sending out a link uh, to your teacher and you, and you uh, with the details. It's going to be on June 17th for saxophones. Uh, and you'll register right to Elefante Music. And it'll be uh, a, a, a master class with a member of their staff. Uh, and you can ask all kinds of questions. And they'll work with you on your piece and, and grow as musicians. So we're, we're so fortunate to have these kinds of partnerships. and. And, and reward the students that receive this kind of uh, accomplishment in this festival. So uh, I'll be sharing that with you in an email very soon, okay? Excellent. All right. Thanks so much for being here, guys. And uh, Abner, I'll be taking a look at that handle uh, um, etude um, video performance coming up soon. Wish you good, wish you good luck in your preparation. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Take Have care. a great evening. You too. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Great, what a great night, right? Middle school students, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, performing, you know, most sophisticated A-level repertoire at the highest levels of performance. So very fortunate to have them on. Again, we, we had Isabella Francisco, along with Sarah Francino, her teacher from Churchill Junior High School. 
Uh, we had Elena Yamachi with her dad, Yui Yamachi, Yu Yamachi on flute. Um, uh, and then just now Abner Bijesh from Montgomery Upper Middle School. I have to say again, two students from Tenekil High sc uh, Middle School in Kloster. Uh, let me get their names so they can have a little shout out. Tyler Kwan and David Kim, unfortunately not able to be with us tonight. And then Ashley Peng from Heritage Middle School in Livingston, unable to be with us tonight. But I, did, I definitely did want to mention their names because they also achieved that same level of, of, of accomplishment playing A-level literature at that, um, at that level. Uh, again, um, let me share with everybody who's watching who may be participating. If you're participating in the festival, your video submissions and PDF submissions are due May 1st through the 15th. The last date is the 15th, okay? Uh, and that's a pretty hard stop date because we want the judges to get right to work on the 16th. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at dennis at artsednewjersey.org. And uh, I'll try to live up to the kind words of Mr. Yamauchi and uh, get back to you as courteously and quickly as possible with the information that you seek. Uh, and as I mentioned before, again, next week, please stay tuned and tune in as I will have uh, Mr. Brennan Sweet, a violinist with the New Jersey Symphony, Andy Lamy, uh, principal clarinetist with the, with the New Jersey Symphony, and Miss Judy Yinchi Lin Lee, who's the director of operations and community programs with us to discuss. Um, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about their, their perspective as judges for this festival. I uh, have a couple of students on as well that they adjudicated to talk about that process. And obviously this... Um, two weeks worth of master classes that they're providing the week of June 14th and the week uh, all the way through June 23rd for violin, viola, cello, bass, a string orchestra that was uh, one of the gold star winners, flute, oboe, English horn, clarinet, bass clarinet, bassoon, trumpet, French horn, trombone, euphonium, tuba, and percussion. If you're a gold star winner in one of those categories, New Jersey Symphony Orchestra is going to provide you with a two-hour master class the weeks of June 14th through June 23rd. Amazing. If you are a classical vocalist, a musical theater performer, classical guitarist, or classical saxophonist, like we just had Abner on, uh, and are a gold star winner, Elefante Music is going to be able to reward you with the master class in those categories. I'll be sending an email out with that information in the next couple of days. And finally, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, if you are a jazz musician that participated in the uh, Spring Festival, or if you're a jazz musician uh, st student uh, entry that is participating in the Spring Festival as well, any participant, Jazz House Kids, is providing on May 22nd, it's coming up soon, a, uh, a master class uh, for all jazz students with a little extra special recognition for the gold one stars that I can't give away yet, but uh, suffice to say that uh, Mr. Christian McBride, who's the musical director of Jazz House, will be an integral part in that uh, extra um, recognition for those students. Again, my name is Dennis Argel. There's my email address, Dennis Argel, dennis at artsheadnewjersey.org. Please reach out with any questions and be with us again next week for Festival Fun Facts when we have members of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra to discuss their participation in partnership with Arts Ed New Jersey and the New Jersey State Solo and Ensemble Festival. Okay, folks, have a great night, and I'll see you.